Tom Kench, the tanky support, is now an AP burst mage that can even be played mid with an ult that swallows enemies up, then deals thousands of percentage health damage when he spits them out. And this began my mission to make AP Tom Kench work. This all started a few weeks ago in patch 12.19, where Riot increased the AP ratio of Tom's Q and his W, the knockup. But Riot realized that mage Tom Kench was not good enough. So in patch 12.23, they buffed him again, and it was one of the biggest buffs I've ever seen for any champion. His auto attack AP damage was buffed, his Q damage and W damage were buffed again, his E was buffed to make him an even better solo laner, and even his ultimate was buffed, now dealing 7% max health damage per 100 AP that you buy. So just this ability by itself can kill a champion if you get enough AP, with Tom Kench's auto attacks also dealing AP damage. An AP build really makes sense. So it was time to get testing and see if I could make this really work, and I'll tell you about that right after I pay my rent and food bills. As it's almost Christmas, this video has a special sponsor. Something that we all need as gamers is a great PC to play on. And who better to sponsor this channel than the PC I've used for the past 12 months to play games and work on, the Alienware Aurora R13. This beast of a PC, of course, is perfect for playing League, crank up the settings, and teamfight in ultra quality without dropping any frames. Outside of League, the R13 handles all other new games on the highest settings possible, again with great FPS. From multiplayer competitive games like CS go, or single player games like the new Spider-Man which just came to PC. All the big AAA titles, and of course story games, they all look amazing on this PC. And the best part is that it's basically silent even when you're playing, and yet the cooling still works perfectly. With a sleek design on the outside with a rounded case, this helps with airflow and improves the cable management inside, also having an optional window so you can see inside, to see the customizable lighting. I love this PC, but one complaint I know people might have is the price, and I do understand why, these PCs aren't cheap. But if you want a high-spec, high-performance PC, then you wouldn't really want it to be cheap. You pay for the quality of parts that you get, as well as, I think, the opportunities this PC creates. I wouldn't have a job without having a PC like this, so it's really paid for itself. And the price is mostly based on the cost of parts. But then you also, of course, get Alienware to build it for you, and on top of this quality build, you also get their customer support. So if you want to get your own R13, or check out any other Alienware products, please click the link in the description. Back to AP Tom Kench. As soon as I saw his insane damage, I knew the first stop was picking a new lane. For AP Kench, mid lane was calling to me. A lane full of mages, specifically immobile mages, who Tom can easily slow with his tongue and then W onto them for a free knockup into an all-in. And also a lane full of assassins, with Kench having great tank stats and consistent shields and healing. He really doesn't have to worry about getting solo killed. Mid lane was the way to go, and now we just need a build. For mages we have a few options. Ludens, Everfrost, or Night Harvester. The first two are obvious answers for a Elena, giving you mana sustain and good poke. But then for Tom Kench, I noticed something. Unlike most AP mages, whose spells cost more and more mana throughout the game, Tom Kench's main poke tool, his Q, actually costs less mana as you level it up. And on top of this, his ultimate and shield both cost zero mana, so even spending gold on this stat would be a waste. However, you can do a cool trick with Everfrost where you slow them with Q, then Everfrost and W at the same time to guarantee the knockup will land. If you use this well, then it's quite an unstoppable combo. If you're not doing this, then Night Harvester is the best option. Highest damage and a great build path, as it contains Hextech Alternator, which is flat damage that stacks on top of your Q, making your early 1 vs 1s much stronger. It was time to test, loading into our first game. Our matchup was Zed mid. Let's see how good it is against a high burst assassin. We couldn't rely anymore on building full tank and outscaling him. Outplaying him was the only option. Starting Q is a given. It's our main damage ability, and will be what we max first. You can poke with Q at level 1, but it's high risk, and the damage doesn't stick on the enemy very well. Level 2, Tom has a secret weapon for leaning, his E. It's great for shielding in trades, but also if you don't use it for the shield, then you'll just heal for 45% of any damage that you've stored. Comboing this with Doran Shield, which also regenerates health rapidly after you take a trade, your trade pattern is to walk up, get CS, maybe take a bit of poke, and then stall by walking away, regenerating the health that you lost, and repeating that over and over again. This is why Kench is so hard to kill in any lane. Even a poke champion is going to run out of mana before they kill him. Level 3, we take W to look for an engage. Against mobile champions, this is really hard to do. As soon as you dash in, they're going to dash away, so forcing them into a 1 vs 1 is hard. But on the plus side, Zed isn't using his shadow for damage. He's using it to escape, and so he's not really doing his job as an assassin, and this makes the lane a lot safer. This ability is so clutch when you get ganked. Against low CC mids, or even ones with no CC, Kent can W out in front of their face and escape. Early wards 
skills to spot ganks is very important, but with how tanky you are, lots of enemies can't kill you fast enough before you can run away. He's not mobile, but he is very hard to gank, and apparently this is enough to make me a tryhard according to the enemy team. Never thought I'd be called this when playing mage Tom Kench. I was more worried about my teammates thinking that I'm trolling, but level 6 is where the fun starts. With some AP from an early base, the goal is simple. Stack 3 auto attacks on an enemy, eat them and spit them out to their death. With the crazy high ult damage, Tom beats almost every matchup in terms of his burst. Of course also using the E shield to block enemy damage and eating them so they can't deal any more, meaning Tom comes out ahead, a fight that even I didn't think I could win. Three minutes later my ignite also pays off, again tanking Zed's full burst and finishing him with a Q. Hextech alternator acquired with 5 points in Q and Tom Kench's damage now spikes. Honestly it's surprising to everyone how much damage you do at this point. I'd say that by now you don't really need to outplay enemies in 1 vs 1s, if they try to fight you then they'll probably lose. It's easy to hit a melee range Q, which slows them, so you can auto them and get 3 stacks, and then just ult them for the kill. If they get ulted then they're dead. It's just like Cho'Gath but even higher damage, and you don't have to finish the fight with it. Then Night Harvester comes online with the bonus initial damage and movement speed. If you land the first Q then the enemies will be forced into a fight whether they want to or not. I tested this pick quite a lot on a couple of accounts, and most of the laning phases went this way, with some of them ending even earlier, immobile champions with no dashes are just screwed against Tom Kench. They must flash away as soon as you W in or they're dead. Landing your Q is a 50% slow even at level 1, so you have plenty of time to line up your W, knocking them up and then using your AP auto attacks and ignite to win the fight. With especially mage mid laners not having enough damage to even kill you, the first trick I learned for mid lane Kench is letting the enemy push lane to your tower, then hiding over raptor wall, Wing over the wall to use the AP damage to kill the wave trapping them alone at the tower, hitting them with a Q into ult, and spitting them back into the tower for the extra damage. You can fake a roam and just repeat this over and over, however the enemy of mid lane Tom Kench is mobile champions who have dashes, as well as range poke. This is definitely who you should ban, a champion like Leblanc who you can never reach, or someone like Akshan who can poke you and swing away from you, so you can never really get to them. After laning phase you have two options, stay grouped up or split push. Staying grouped up is amazing, because the thing you struggle with is setup. You struggle to reach people by yourself, but once you get there you're really effective. So comboing with your team's CC, it's easy to set up a high damage W knockup. Usually this ability is mostly set up for your team, but with this build it's a game winner, ending the team fight and setting up your Q burst damage. He's really good at 1v1s in the side lane, the hard part is reaching the enemy. So when I realised that mobility was probably his biggest issue, I gave Rocket Belt a try. I think it's a great option for reaching squishy mobile champions and one-shotting them with no counterplay, no one's going to expect a Tom Kench to dash at them. As the game goes on, Tom gets more tanky thanks to the grasp in your runes. I think it's the best option as the build gives you all of your damage, so you can take these runes to help you get through lane and make you a bit safer later on. I did try Arcane Comet in runes as well, for the extra poke in lane and all in on a Q poke playstyle. This lets you dominate the lane more but it falls off faster and fights are going to be harder if you're more squishy. Team fights are the hardest part of this this build. With a lead, your damage is crazy. The problems start if Tom Kench is behind. He's good at getting picks, he can yoink enemies into his team and set up kills, but in a 5 vs 5 he relies on poking people with Q and then comboing them, which is hard if enemies have peel or dashes to get away. So this is where I started to adapt. My first adaptation, after ulting someone, I pinged the spot I was going to spit them out, letting my teammates know exactly where to put their burst damage. Tom Kench's ult also lasts for 4 seconds, so with some cooldown reduction, you can use Q before you eat them, and then hold them inside your belly until your Q is back up using it instantly as you spit them back out for a guaranteed hit. Also buying Zonyas, which is good if you want to go in, be an engager but still be safe, but you can also use Zonyas when someone's inside your stomach. Zonyas last for 2.5 seconds, so if you pick someone up you can then stall with it. It keeps you safe while you're waiting for your Q to come back up, and for your teammates to surround them to guarantee the kill. Late game Tom Kent is really fun, your damage just keeps getting higher, and he can now kill towers really quickly. He's still very tanky, but his magic damage auto attack 
attacks just shred through them, especially great for splitting. So how good is AP Tom Kench? The benefits. High poke damage on your Q. If you're playing mid lane, then it's a very unexpected pick. You and your top laner will easily know your matchup, with Tom Kench even being able to take double armor or double magic resist in runes, but the enemies have no idea what they're playing against. Most of my teammates didn't even know that Tom Kench does AP damage, and this was in Diamond. His laning is really good thanks to the high damage and the sustain on your E. Once you get 6, your 1 versus 1's are really powerful, and I think importantly, unlike some off-meta builds that are full glass cannon, this one will never really be useless. He can always do poke damage, and he can always eat someone, even a teammate, to change the outcome of a game. But let's look at the downsides and see if we can fix any of them. Firstly, his low mobility. I think Rocket Belt is a pretty good solution, letting him actually dash onto people. Secondly, his squishiness. This is definitely hard with an AP build, but I think having grasp in your runes helps a lot. Once you get later in the game, lots of assassins still can't kill you, but what about the low range on his Q and his W, making it hard to do damage? I'd say this is fixed by how you play the pick. If you're always trying to engage from max range, then you're likely to go in and miss. But if you're playing with Fog of War and comboing with your teammate CC, then your range really doesn't matter. One thing I found is even using Flash W with this build. It looks absolutely awful and really stupid, but it does work well if you just need to extend your W a tiny bit and change your play around. So overall, I think this pick is great for 1v1s and snowballing in solo queue, and I'd say this pick is half easy and half hard. Really easy in 1v1s and in lane, and then harder as the game goes on. For the full wizard frog build, I talked to a master Kench main who's also been testing this pick, and we combined our builds. Early Dark Seal and Boots for 1v1 fights. You can rush Night Harvester right away to get the maximum power, or you can even go Morello first, something I'd never thought about. It's a cheap AP item, cheaper than the Mythics. It has a lot of stats, and it's gold efficient even without the anti-heal part. People think this item sucks, but in reality it's a cheap and fast power spike, so you can spike before your opponent does. And the anti-healing does make your team fights a bit better, since it gives you the utility. Demonic Embrace next for the burn and the health. Health is always really valuable on Kench, making him safer and also increasing his auto attack damage. That's how it scales. Finishing the build with more AP, or a tank item if you're struggling and need to be a frontliner. For runes, this grass page is best overall, but the comet page is actually better for leaning power. If you're trying out AP Kench, then I wish you good luck. Please don't play it top lane if you have a soul. And thanks again to Alienware for sponsoring this video. If you want to buy a PC just like mine, then the link is in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and Merry Christmas.